In this message, guys, we're going to try and tie some uh, many topics together. Please be patient with this message. Uh, for some of you, I'm going to cover things that um, may be a different perspective than what you have. Again, guys, the main thing we want to do is, you know, just let the scripture speak for themselves, okay? Um, in this, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the mark of the beast, the image of the beast. And we're going to talk about the seal. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of unleavened bread. We're going to talk about the shekel of the sanctuary. Now, I know a lot of you are new to this channel. And so many of the concepts we've been speaking about for years as a voice in the wilderness, <laughs> um, you know, you haven't heard. So uh, before you start jumping to various conclusions about the subject matter, I encourage you to watch some of the other videos. We've, we've shown you clearly that the seal and the mark are at odds. So there's a war going on, okay? And I encourage you to get the notes too. We're going to have notes. We're going to go through um, some aspects in, in, of what the scriptures is talking about in Revelation chapter 13 when it's talking about the seal, it's talking about the mark, okay? They have a mark on their forehead. We know that the 144,000 are sealed, okay? And so you'll see that we have a lot of videos about the 144,000, those that are really preparing for the Lord. It's very important that you understand the things that we're saying as it relates to the first fruit seal and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, before we get into that and into the verses, I'll have you know that if any of the things that you hear, you say, okay, Leland, I, uh, you know, I understand what you're saying. I believe what you're saying, but I missed it. That's why there's a second Passover, okay? So if we're not prepared for the first Passover, we have a second Passover. The second Passover is May 2nd, okay? I'm not sure when this will post or, or those details. So let's get right into the scriptures. Let's get right into our notes and talk about these concepts all right guys we're here in revelation 13 and up here you can see uh that the the lamb that speaks as a dragon causes those that dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast which had a wound by the sword that did live and he had power to give life to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as that would not worship the image of the beast should be killed any cause both small and rich uh, excuse me small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads that no man might buy or sell save he that had a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name now uh, of course certainly just about everybody listening to this right now will have a uh, an opinion about this and that's fine that's um you know those 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 things very well may be but what we want to do is we want to just take a look and do a comparison with what we find in the book of exodus all right what are we talking about in the book of exodus when moses was to um build the tabernacle, the moving temple, he was instructed to do a census. So he counted the people. So it's interesting, it says in Exodus 30, verse 12, when you take a sum of the people, then Exodus 38, 21, when you take a sum of the tabernacle. So what does this mean? Well, it means, of course, the people are the temple. Many of you are saying, Leland, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's correct. And this is what we can see in Exodus, okay? So it's important for us to understand some of these concepts of what Moses is doing because we will be able to identify the beast will counterfeit the very same thing, okay? So then, again, when we get to um, Revelation, okay, there's the image of the beast. Now, image in the Greek is 
ikion, okay, which means likeness. It's a statue. It's a figure, a resemblance. It's the image on the coin, which is what? Caesar. What's a coin? What you use to buy or sell, okay? So remember that image of the beast, that coin, all right? So just, I'm just planting a lot of seeds, so let's just remember that. All right. Then what he does, he causes many would not worship should be killed. Okay, so something is going on that the beast is doing um, to cause the the blind masses to worship the beast, and they're going to be killed. Right. All right. Then we remember what it said, and he makes all, both small and great, rich and poor. Now, when Moses went to build the tabernacle, he did something called the shekel of the sanctuary okay so you can see and i encourage you to get these notes this this is going to be very deep concepts for many of you and i you really got to study this out all right take your time i'm not going to be able to cover it all guys all right so get the notes and go through it all right so what do we have we have an image of the beast that work in the greek relates to um the lord jesus said whose image is on the coin they said caesar all right so that's the there's an image on the coin and we've been showing you this in fact let's illustrate it all right this is the temple institute what do they have they have a coin what is on it a temple okay what are they doing they're doing something called the shekel of the sanctuary but they are building a temple for the beast, okay? So we have this coin here, all right? That's what is a part of this. I'm not saying this is the whole thing, guys, but this is going on, guys, already, okay? So they already minted this coin. We showed you before they put Donald Trump on it, right? All right. So that's what the beast is doing. The beast is building a temple. The beast is counting the people to get them, small or great, rich or poor, free or bond, to receive a mark in their hand and in their foreheads. Well, if we look at the shekel of the sanctuary, and here's an actual shekel from the temple. All right, we'll put that up here. That's on this side. Let's see, there's two sides, so we'll use that side. Okay, a little off the screen there. There we go. Okay. And in the shekel of the sanctuary, the people were to give a half a shekel to Moses. And then what it says, the rich shall not give more. The poor shall not give less, but a half a shekel. So we can clearly see that the language in Revelation 13, as it relates to the rich and poor... Is, is telling us about this shekel of the sanctuary, okay? And we have lots of other videos on the shekel of the sanctuary and how you redeem the people. But for time's sake, we're going to move on. Now, then what it says is it, it's to, the beast is trying to cause them to receive a mark in their right hand and in their forehead. Now, again, if we take this language of the right hand and forehead, and we look for that symbolism in the book of Exodus, we find two examples. Both are in Exodus chapter 13. Okay, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually uh, open up a Bible and read this to you and read the context here. Um, because I have the notes, but this is just an example of where we really need to read... Uh, much of this, okay? Because when it's when it's talking about these things, these are not new concepts, okay? The right hand and on the forehead. All right. Uh, let's start right here. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Well, that's the feast of unleavened bread, which is the seven days after Passover. This is why I've been telling you Passover is so important. On the seventh day shall be a feast unto the Lord. Unleavened bread shall, shall be eaten seven days. And there shall be no leaven... Bread be seen in you, neither leaven be seen in your quarters or borders or in your house. So when it's talking about your house, when it's talking about your temple, it's talking about you, your person. Okay? 
So what do we have? Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. Okay, this is what I'm saying. If you didn't do this, do it again. Coming up after May 2nd. Okay, so we have unleavened bread seven days, and you shall show your son in that day, saying, This is done because of what the Lord did when we came forth out of Egypt. It shall be a sign upon your hand, a memorial between your eyes. Okay, remember that's what, the, what we saw, the right hand, the forehead. Okay, this is a sign of what? Unleavened bread to be a memorial between your eyes, that the Lord's law may be in your mouth. For the strong hand has he brought you out of Egypt. Okay? So what do we have? We have a right hand. We have a forehead. All right, then it continues. And he talks about redeeming. And uh, it's the first, that's, uh, just quickly here. And the firstborn of every man and children shall you redeem. Okay? All right, now it's talking about redeeming, redemption. How do you redeem? With the coin. A shekel of the sanctuary. Again, if you don't know what we're talking about, watch the other videos. All right. And the firstborn of all the man and the firstborn of the beast and the shall you sacrifice to the Lord that opens the matrix being males. But all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a token. Or in Hebrew, it's a sign upon your what? Hand. And frontlets between your eyes. What's that? Your forehead. For by the strength of the Yahweh's hand, he brought you forth out of Egypt. Okay? So you can clearly see in the book of Exodus and God's redemption plan, okay, has this sign on the hand, on the forehead. Okay? And what is it related to? It's related to unleavened bread. Let it be a sign on your hand and a memorial between your eyes. Okay, and again, if we apply this to the book of Revelation, we have the sealed ones, the 144,000, which are sealed. All right, now, we're going to shift ge gears here, guys. We're going to stay on the same subject, but now let's go to the Gospel of John. Let's go to the Gospel of John, and um, for time's sake, what's, what's happening is the Lord Jesus is in the Sea of Galilee by Tiberius um, in the beginning Celebrating Passover. Okay, you can see the same thing. He walks on the water. He does the loaves and the fishes. And then he says this. Labor not for meat or food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give to you. For him, in the, in the King James it says, has, but really that word is sealed. For him sealed God, the Father, God the Father sealed. Okay, so the Son of Man sealed. So there's a seal that relates to your labor, your work. Okay, now what's happening? The seal here he's talking about relates to unleavened bread. What is he talking about? He's talking about Passover. He's talking about he is. Okay, see it here? He is the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. I am that living bread which came down from heaven. If any man shall eat this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Except you eat of my flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you have no life in me. Okay, he's talking about he is the manna. Remember how he told you we're in an exodus, okay? This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and our dead, he that eats this bread shall live forever. That's the manna, guys, that it's talking about in Revelation. So what is it? It's a sign. It's a seal of redemption. Okay? So that's what it is, guys. And it's, a, it's an actual mark. There's an actual seal and mark of those that have got the leaven out. Okay, you got to have the 11, the 144,000 are those that are not defiled by women, not defiled by harlots. Okay, that's what's got to happen. All right, and what else? You redeem the firstborn. Let it be a sign upon your hand, upon the frontlets between your eyes. Well, how do you do, how do you redeem? You redeem by the shekel of the sanctuary. Okay, that's one side. And this is an actual example 
of a temple shekel around the time of the second temple. All right, let's keep going. So we have the beast over here. We talked at him. Over here is, this is Revelation. This is um, Exodus, the book of Exodus, right? Okay. To receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads that no man might buy or sell. Okay, now it was buying or selling. Uh, buying and selling is, is currency. Simple as that. Okay. And the currency at the time of Christ was called a denarian and it had an image of Caesar. And this is what Christ said, give unto God the things that are due unto God and Caesar the things due unto Caesar. Luke 20, verse, chapter 20, verse 24. Okay. okay, so again, we have, all right, most small, great, rich, poor, free, bond, receive a mark on their right hand, on their foreheads. No man will buy or sell, save he that has the mark, the name of the beast, the number of his name. All right, now, remember how we said that the people go into the building, right? So the people gave a shekel of the sanctuary. They gave the shekel of the sanctuary. They gave it to Moses. That silver, that gold was melted and then went into the components of the tabernacle. And during... Um, the temple, the first temple, when Solomon built, he gets 10,000 talents of silver. Okay? And Christ talked about 10,000 talents. Those are forgiven. So now let's look into how the beast is going to do this. Because we have the type of Haman, the son of perdition. And what is he going to do? He goes to the king. Let it be decreed that they be destroyed and I will weigh... Sakal in Hebrew is, is like shekel. The words are very similar. I will weigh or, or, or shekel 10,000 talents of silver. And again, like we said in the temple, 1 Chronicles 29, 7, there was 10,000 talents of silver. Okay, so into the hands of those that will have charge over the king's business that they will put and they would trade into the king's treasury. So what is he doing? He's, he's going into the king's treasury. He's getting 10,000 talents of silver to kill the believers. All right? So this is exactly what you see the beast doing. The beast is, is counterfeiting the shekel of the sanctuary, God's order, proper order of things, and he's counterfeiting. That's exactly what's going on. All right, now we also find him as the king of the north in Daniel chapter 11. In Daniel 11, verse 11, the king of the north, he shall set forth a great multitude. All right. So how do you redeem the great multitude with 10,000 talents? If you don't know what I'm talking about, please watch the census. Okay. I'll put links in the description field, guys, so you can understand these concepts. Um, so the king of the north, he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. That's what we see in Revelation. The beast will overcome the saints in Daniel, uh, Revelation 13, 7, Daniel 7, 21. Daniel eleven twelve. 12, and his heart shall be lifted up and he shall cast down the tens of thousands. What is this? 10,000 talents. Okay, same thing, 10,000 talents of silver. Then in verse 21, and he shall stand up in his estate, the raiser of taxes. Now, taxes is not just increasing the amount of tax you pay. It is... A process the beast is doing to kill the people okay and I'm showing you all this so that you would get victory over the beast that you would get leaven out of your house okay and again this here is John chapter 6 verse 27 labor not for food which perishes but that which endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man gives to you for him is sealed okay whom the god, god the father sealed so you can see that there's clearly a connection with the seal a coin and the feast of unleavened bread okay so again what have we learned the image of the beast is counterfeiting the concepts in the scripture about the shekel of the sanctuary 
okay? And I am sharing with us you so you can get victory over the beast. That's why I've been showing you so much about the third temple. Why? Because the beast is doing this to, to go about this whole, all of this. Okay, now the scripture's got to be fulfilled, but it's those that are the, the sealed ones that must overcome the first fruits. All right, but then in New Jerusalem, all are sealed. Okay, so guys, all I can say is get the leaven bread, get the leaven out of your hearts, out of your house. Okay, I'll put links in the description field for the shekel of the sanctuary playlist. We already covered this Donald Trump coin. Okay, we've covered all this. None of this is new. All right, those of you been following. But the thing we're sharing with you is it's the rehearsal of unleavened bread is the seal. So guys, as I say, watch and pray to be counted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man.